Hello, my name is Ed, and I prepared this video to discuss the proposed Rosemont Mine and what it means for you. Most people in the southern Arizona area really do not understand what's going to go on with this mine, either through ignorance or apathy, and I hope you'll bring those facts to light before it's too late. When I talk to people about this mine, I have to remind them that, that this will not be just another mine. This will be one of the world's largest open pit mines, and it will somewhat resemble mines like in Marinci, Globe, or even Bisbee, and the, you can see the impact that is produced in those areas. Uh, the Rosebot mine is, sounds enticing to a lot of people because it promises hundreds of new jobs, but let me clarify this. Uh, initially, it's proposed that as uh, many as 600 construction-related jobs will be created for the next two or three years to start this mine off, but this will trickle down to approximately 200 uh, steady-state employees. But one thing I need to clarify that these 200 employees will not necessarily be Tucson uh, area residents. A lot of them will be corporate people brought down from Canada, and also there'll be mass recruiting throughout the nation. So it's not like these will be Tucson people. So it may be 75, 100 people, I don't know, but it's certainly not going to be just all 200 uh, Tucson re residents, and you got to keep that in mind. So in essence, uh, the proposed robot mine will really hire and employ no more than an average Walmart, and you can see that that's not that significant of an impact on the economy. One thing people need to realize is this mine will have a huge impact on the flora and fauna in the area. For one, they have to pump the water out of the ground in the area around the mine just to keep the open pit from flooding in. So you're gonna decrease the, the water table over the water table in the area, which is gonna again, decrease the flora and fauna. Plus you're gonna have things like light, 24 hour light, explosions, dust, noise, traffic, and wildlife does not like that kind of things. And you're gonna actually see a huge impact on the area environment. Can I use the word flora and fauna, but you need to realize that. One serious consideration on the installation of this mine will be the use of Highway 83 as it's the only road to and from the mine. However, this is not a main highway. It is a secondary highway, which is used by lots of traffic, motorcycles, cars, RVs, and the problem with this is you're gonna have heavy traffic, you're gonna have wrecks and accidents due to rock spillage, and plus you're just gonna slow down the traffic with these slow mine trucks. And ultimately these heavy 80,000, 100,000 pound mine trucks will destroy this pavement because it's not designed for that kind of traffic. Another important aspect of this proposed mine is that it's shut down a lot of the backcountry roads as much as a quarter, if not a third of the area on both east and west side of the Santa Rita. And a lot of people enjoy off-roading, camping, hiking, backpacking, bird watching, and just exploring. But now a lot of these areas are being closed off through strategic planning and land grab, if I can use that word, by HUD Bay. And so in other words, it's impacted this already. So this is, I mean, this is an important aspect of people that actually enjoy the outdoors in the area. One way that HUD Bay is attempting to appeal to the residents of Southern Arizona is what I'd call pelts and trinkets. And essentially what it is, is HUD Bay's offered approximately $150 million in services, charitable gifts, and donations uh, to, again, bring the, to light that HUD Bay is actually a benevolent company. But you have to ask yourself, is it worth this? Because when you talk about 150 million compared to 6 billion in royalty-free minerals, and then of course you have to factor in the excavation cost and the, the salaries of the people, but you're still talking 10 times the return on investment for something that's not in Arizona's best interest financially. So that's a question that you have to ask yourself on that. Probably one of the most important, if not the most important aspect of this mine is the legacy uh, mess that it will leave behind. Once this mine leaves in 20, 25 years, you're going to have a complete mess. You're going to have a mile wide hole that's 3,000 foot deep. 
and you're going to have an unstabilized uh, mountain of tailings in the area, which will need to be guarded, and which will need to be uh, maintained. And who's going to pick up the bill? Is it, are the American taxpayers going to pick up this once the mine picks up and leaves? Because the mine has no intentions of cleaning this up. And even if they do have intentions, it's a common mine practice to declare bankruptcy and leave it behind. So we will have this mess for eternity. So people of Arizona, you need to think about this. Is it worth trading 200 odd jobs for a lifetime, if not an eternity, of destruction for our beautiful Santa Rita Mountains? That's a question for you to decide. And thank you for your time.